and and I hope everyone had a really really great Easter uh, that's uh, tuning in this morning. And if you're not tuning in, uh, I just pass along the words to those folks who don't listen that I'm also wishing that they had a really really happy Easter. Wonderful uh, wonderful time for me yesterday, and uh, got to uh, go to an early early service, <laughs> which means the twice a year people weren't there. I actually found a seat, and I'm always happy when when that happens. Because you get to a certain age and you stand around sometimes for hours on end and you start to feel it, especially if you have issues of the sciatic nerve. So didn't have any of that to worry about yesterday. Speaking of faith, and I wanted to open the show today talking about a few issues with that related to what's going on in the Middle East, North Africa, and in Pakistan. Take for a moment and think about this. In the last few days, and set aside the Roman Catholic priest who was crucified by ISIS on Good Friday. Some of you may have heard about that. It's not getting a lot of coverage here in Western media, I guess because they didn't want to offend the Muslim hordes who are carrying out these horrific crimes. But just set aside his death, his crucifixion on Friday, and then count up how many people are dead now in Belgium and Pakistan and Ivory Coast from a couple of weeks ago. We told you about a story last week. And a writer at the Wall Street Journal decided to sit down and start cataloging over the previous 10 days how many people had died in attacks by Islamic extremists, as they're called. That is, practitioners of the Islamic faith. Many of whom, and you know what, we've always got to qualify that by saying, well, they're not all bad people, only a few hundred million. (laughs) Which is a manageable number, right, When, when you stop and you think about that. He sat down and decided to catalog over 10 days how many attacks took place, how many people were killed, and he discovered there was an attack every day among those 10 days. There are so many of these attacks any longer that unless the death toll is spectacular, you know, it's up in the 30, 40s, 50, 60, 130, that it doesn't get any coverage any longer. If it's a half a dozen, there's barely a mention of it in Western media any longer. It's like the drive-by shootings in Los Angeles. They got to be so commonplace, the media stopped covering them. Nine minutes after 8 o'clock, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com, right at the freezing mark, 32. Uh, stepping outside today, you'll notice it's going to be a little brisk. In fact, it'll be a little brisk and snowy perhaps tomorrow. And then we're going to tell you the weather will get really, really nice by the end of the week going into this next weekend. So be patient. We'll get there eventually. So I'm listening to all of these people talk about what's going on and other parts of the world, and of course, we're told it could never happen here. There was some, I, I, I saw this, it was yesterday or today, I was reading Real Clear Politics, and they have several links to columnists from around the country and the world who write about issues as varied as politics to religious faith to science. And one of these clowns was again saying that it's the harsh rhetoric coming out of the American presidential uh, candidates uh, that is causing all of this violence. As if somehow all of this Islamic violence started a few months ago and nothing had happened before. You know, you go back to the uh, the hijacking of that jet uh, that they blew up on the uh, the tarmac. What was it? The, in Jordan back in 1970. Uh, let's see. You go back to the Arab-Israeli wars going back to 1948, 1956, 1967, 1973. Uh, oh, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. Munich, where they took over, of course, the, uh, the, the compound of the Israelis at the Olympics, killed 11 Israeli athletes. Uh, oh, uh, Entebbe, where they, they hijacked an Israeli airplane. And uh, that was while well, I was in high school. I'm 54 years old, for crying out loud. And I could I could cite these things down through the Achille Loro in 19, what was it, 85. Pan Am Flight 103, 1988. Uh, World Trade Center in 1993. World Trade Center in 2001. Pentagon in 2001. A field in Pennsylvania in 2001. Why does it, you know, this, this notion that somehow, if Ted Cruz and Donald Trump are a little tough in their rhetoric on Islam, oh, it's only going to make matters worse. No, it's not. Things are already pretty bad. And to sit here and say this will only make it worse, are you going to cower in fear for the rest of your lives and worry that you might say something that will offend a guy who's already an arch criminal? 12 minutes after 8 o'clock, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. The Obama White House sent Frankenstein out yesterday to try to calm the nerves and fears people may have. Uh, this is Secretary of State John Kerry. 
Oh, the other day, Teresa and I were abusing the servants after they burned the beans almondine, and I told her that I should have been president, and if I had been president way back in 2004, none of this would be happening because we would have long ago surrendered. He's on CBS Face the Nation, and he claims we've beaten ISIS. We have recouped about 40% of the territory in Syria, which they had captured, and we're taking out about one leader every three days of of ISIL dash. <clears throat> wow. I'll tell you what, that scent tingles up my spine. First of all, he says, we have retaken 40% of the land. In who is this we? Is he talking about the Russians who got involved and, and stabilized the Syrian government so the Syrian government could then go wipe these people out? We? Hello? <laughs> if, if I'm sitting right now in the Russian defense ministry... I'm scratching my head on that one, saying, where have they been? I mean, were they disguised as uh, camels? I mean, we didn't see any American troops. Now, there probably are a handful of special forces operatives who are working in that part of the world. But there has not really been a serious American commitment. And when we, in fact, we've got defense of people in this own country who've been telling us that the number of raids that have actually gone on attacking these people is, you know, sometimes it's just a handful a day. And then he says, well, we've been executing some of their leaders. You know, they've got a lot of leaders because they have cells all over the world now. Frankly, we've got to get rid of all of them. All of them. A priest friend said last week, told me on Facebook, I mentioned that we really need a new crusade. We need to find good, hearty young men who are willing to go there and clean this mess up once and for all. And he replied, well, we need to pray for the conversion of their souls. I'll do that too. But in the meantime, pass the ammunition. John Kerry went on to defend his boss, who was tangoing while the world was burning. To quote uh, Charles Krauthammer, you don't, the President of the United States' schedule is not set by terrorists. I would not tell any friend of mine or member of my family, don't travel to Europe uh, or elsewhere, but I would say, do so with an awareness of what you're choosing to do, of what activity you undertake, and where you are. Of course, now when he travels to Europe, it's usually to fall off a bicycle. And he also goes with a large Secret Service detail and then usually stays at sh some chateau, which is, you know, ringed with walls. We're being told that fences and walls don't do any good. Well, when John Kerry's traveling throughout Europe, they certainly do. This is the story about the priest. The Islamic State committed a grisly Good Friday commemoration crucifying a Catholic priest. This is from Victor Morton at the Washington Times. Now, the Reverend Thomas, and I believe you pronounced the last name, Yusa Nalil, he's a Salesian priest, was kidnapped in Yemen in early March during a raid on a nursing home run by Mother Teresa's Missionaries of Charity. Sixteen people were killed there, including some of the nuns. His execution by the Islamic ses, uh, Islamist sect, there we go, using the same method used by Romans on Jesus and marked on Good Friday every year, was confirmed at the Easter Vigil Mass by Cardinal Christoph Schonborn of Vienna, Austria. So th this, this, is, this is what we're dealing with. And, you know, they burn people in cages, they drown people in cages, they tie people up into automobiles and then blow up the automobiles, they crucify people, and yet we stand back and say, you know what, we'll put up some candles and some teddy bears, and we'll, we'll, I'm going to go to my Facebook page and put the French flag over my picture, and we'll all feel better. 815, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and NewsRadio1310.com. The telephone number is 736-0300. You're on the air. Yeah, good morning, Bill. Um, over the weekend, I don't keep up with their names, but I'll just call him a spokesperson for Obama, said that uh, if we didn't have all these guns in America, there would not be any terrorism. I'm going, oh, my gosh. Uh, probably Josh Ernest. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember his name, but I would, what a <laughs> joke. I Thank you for the call, too. And, and Funny, they, they have really strict gun laws throughout Europe. Then again, they don't have a lot of bomb control by the sounds of things. Yes, they have gun control, but the bomb control, they're a little shaky on all of that. Can you imagine if somebody, had, well, I don't know that anybody at the airport could have done anything. It's not like someone said, I have a bomb here. It's going to explode in 30 seconds. So even if you were armed, you couldn't cap them. There wasn't any warning. These bombs just went off. They go off because there's this unbridled uh, immigration into Europe from all of these, these migrants, and the Europeans have refused to stop it because, well, we're better than that. No, you're dead is what you are. And some of your children are dead. And some of your spouses are dead or badly burned or they're missing arms and legs because, of course, well, it makes us feel good deep down at the 
pits of our tummy, unless your tummy's got some shrapnel in it, and that's another another story. This comes from Rahim Kassam. Now, a name like that could also be Christian, not necessarily Muslim. And he's writing at Middle East Watch. Teddy bears, tears, candles, cartoons, murals, mosaics, flowers, flags, projections, hashtags, balloons, wreath lights, vigil scarves, and more. These are the best solutions the Western world seems to come up with every few months when we are slammed by another Islamist terrorist attack. And then he says, we are our own sickness. Since the world learned of the dozens dead, hundreds injured, and hundreds of thousands affected by Monday's attack on the NATO and European Union capital, we have seen an outpouring of what is commonly known as, quote, solidarity, unquote. This word most commonly associated with hard left politics, trades union or trade union activism, socialism, and the like, indie rock bands has come to mean very little in reality. In effect, standing in solidarity with someone now means that you have observed the situation, changed your Facebook profile picture accordingly, and patted yourself on the back. Sounds like a lot of those people right here in Idaho backing the, uh, the refugee program, doesn't it? Oh, I went to a dinner party the other day, and all of the liberals who were there from CSI, uh, uh, they told me I was a really swell sport. <laughs> and, and I live in a gated community on the north end of town. <laughs> Walls are a good thing for me, but not for you. You're up next at 818. You know, Bill, it's, it's possible that maybe some of this stuff is uh, coming from our campaign, because uh, if you remember when Ronald Reagan got in, was it the Russians that were saying they were worried about what the cowboy would do because he was a loose cannon? Yes. So, you know, maybe now they're going, whoa, we might actually get somebody in the White House that's got a pair of britches. <laughs> well, you know, now, the Russians, for all their bluster, were terrified of Ronald Reagan. Well, and I, and I, think, I think any terrorist or anybody that's against us is afraid that somebody will get into office that will be like the past and build up something and say, hey, we're not going to take any of your corrupt. And when you're going to dish it out, we'll dish it out twice as much. I, I, All I can tell you is we need somebody who can stand up to these people. Thank you for the call. Because we have had, well, it's not just, I'm not going to sit here and be uh, partisan. I was going to say we've had nearly 18 years or eight years of this, but it, it goes on beyond that. It's been going on for almost 25 years. doesn't really matter who the president is. You've got people who are just hell-bent on appeasement. And, and they, they don't seem to have any real courage. Maybe that's the word I'm looking for. There's no moral fortitude left in any of these people. We've got a short break coming up. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Randy Staples will join us in about 20 minutes from Idaho Weekly Briefing. We'll talk a little bit about uh, Idaho's new concealed carry law taking effect this summer. Also, there's an, a, a rejection of an effort to get a vote by the public in Ada County on refugee resettlement. Apparently, the, uh, the, the liberals running the government there just simply won't allow anyone to have input on that matter. Question, do fences work? Well, they have one around the White House. So, falls fences can apparently be put up and offer some security. I'll get to that in just a moment, 24 minutes after 8 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 31. I also want to tell you during this segment of the program, if I could, it will be warm this coming weekend. We promise. We've promised before I know, but it's going to be a real change of pace around here. And with that, you may want to be outside, but it's going to be windy. You don't necessarily want to deal with all of the dust and the sand and things blowing around. So that's why we would recommend checking out dreamroomdesign.com, where you can go to the website and you can see all sorts of custom work that's been done. They can build a, a sunroom around an existing porch or patio or deck. They can put on a metal roof or a glass roof or a partially metal and glass roof. And you can have windows that open and close. So on those really hot days when it's not so windy, you can still sit out there, but you don't have to deal with the insects because you have the screens that are installed. And, of course, in wintertime as well, you can sit out there, and it gives you extra space. If you have a crowded home and sometimes you need a little peace and quiet, Sunroom can provide that. We would recommend, again, the website, dreamroomdesign.com. You can see if you go there all of the things that they offer in the way of these customized jobs, as well as a great many testimonials from some very, very satisfied customers. 25 minutes after 8 o'clock. You're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley on KLIX. Uh, good morning, Bill. 
Bill, how many girls and women were raped in Chicago? How many people were murdered while Obama was watching baseball and uh, was uh, entertaining the people doing the tango? Uh, how many people have been murdered since he, he's been community uh, organizer and president? Uh, and how many girls have been and women have been raped back there in Chicago? How can he t take care of the... Uh, criminals on the other side of the world when he can't make Chicago safe? That's a good question, and I thank you for the call. Uh, the guy's checked out. You know, lights on, nobody home. Uh, he's just he's just skating now to finish the, finish the last few months. Very dangerous time when you have someone in that type of position. You know, you've seen it with people at work who, who they'll, they'll give their two weeks. Some people I know will work very, very hard over those last two weeks. Others will just simply prop their feet up on the desk and sit back. And if you've got a big project due, it's terrible. And here's a guy, as, as the world is in flames, yeah, he's dancing the tango with somebody other than his wife. Just, I don't, I don't understand it. And yet his, his enablers in the media keep saying, well, you know, he, I don't think he necessarily had to rush right home and say, oh, I stand with the Belgian people because he wasn't going to do anything. So let them watch the baseball game. But once you throw the tango in there, too, as well, what do they say in Washington? The optics look bad. And even some liberals are starting to say, you know what, this guy's an empty suit. Well, we've known it. But see, the problem was they there they can't bring themselves to it because they're like the old 1960s hipsters. Oh, Negroes are cool. <laughs> they play jazz. <laughs> and I want to be like them. <laughs> and they're still in that mode. And yet... These people are given great power in the media. Why is that? 827. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Daily Caller. Several European countries have erected fences to keep migrants out, and according to the numbers, every case appears to have a large impact. Hungary was a popular pathway for refugees on their way to Germany during the fall when the daily illegal border crossings were at 7,000 per day. Prime Minister Viktor Orban decided to erect a fence along the border to Serbia and Croatia. When the fence went up on October 17th, the influx went down to 870 from 6,353 the previous day. Now they're down to just a trickle. Yes, do fences work? And the trickle is because occasionally the migrants cut through the fence. You know how you solve that? <laughs> Bang! I'll tell you what, that's called deterrence. And after you do it a couple of thousand times... The whole thing would end. No one wants to a chance that if they realize that's what the consequences are. I've got this as well. Why an immigration defense matters. This is coming from the Washington Times. Robert W. Mary is the writer. He spells that M-E-R-R-Y. I guess if he married a woman with the last name of... Well, anyway. Europe's problem with Muslims is first and foremost, he writes, an immigration problem. Europe has allowed into its midst too many Muslims on the theory that they will be assimilated into the prevailing Western culture. I guess he's saying that the liberals are more like the Borg from Star Trek. Many have assimilated just fine, but large numbers have not and will not. The gap in religious thinking and cultural sensibility, he writes, is just too large. The view of the Western globalist elites, and he's talking about the liberals right here in Twin Falls, with their push for mass immigration goes something like this. Western civic values and cultural sensibilities are superior to those of the rest of the world. It's the only thing, by the way, that they believe in America is superior to anything else. And people from the rest of the world want to come here to share in those values. Hence, over time, the result will be successful assimilation into a homogenized culture. And they say it will all work out just fine. And then he cites for the next two pages evidence to the contrary. Paragraph after paragraph after paragraph. And he concludes, the first line of defense should be an immigration defense. That means a strong border security system. And if that means a wall, so be it. Walls work. He, by the way, is a longtime Washington journalist and, uh, journalist and publishing executive and the author of several books. Uh, just to, in case you wanted to know who this fellow was. 8.30. In about 15 minutes, Randy Staples from Idaho Weekly Briefing will join us on News Radio 1310. KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story. We're talking a little bit about why the, the president seems so indifferent to the sufferings of especially Christians around the world who are taking the brunt of the violence from the uh, Islamists. But I think that he just, 
it, it's that elitist viewpoint when you you have people on both coasts and then people that he would associate with in Chicago or the middle of the country, and they think that religion is just superstition and archaic. And remember that speech he gave way back when he was first running for president where he made that reference to bitter clingers and people clinging to their God and their guns. And and so it's not a big deal that people are getting killed because they, they have strong religious faith. I want to mention something about that in just a moment related to his job and his efforts to crush the faith of various religious people in this country. 834, Bill Cowley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com online, meaning you can listen to us anywhere all around the world. And if you'd like to reach the program, 736 0300. Tint Lady has a new location. I've been telling you about Tint Lady for almost a year now on the air. New location at 127 Filer Avenue. So if you're down in the area of Washington Street and you know, you're looking for uh, uh, someone to, uh, to drop by and have a chat with about doing some window tints for your home, your office, or even your automobile, or paint protection, these are the people to do it because they'll do a free estimate. They'll come out and take a look at your, uh, your property if need be. If, you, if you're there, though, and you're just talking your car or your truck, they'll come outside and take a look at it, I'm sure, and give you an estimate, too, as well. And keep in mind, window tints can protect those valuables you often have from the bleaching effects of the sun, but as well in the summertime will help reduce that heat in your home and save you money on your electric bill when it comes to the cooling. So free estimate, as I mentioned, you can give them a telephone call as well, 736-8469 or online, tintladyidaho.com. This company's been doing this in the Twin Falls area for almost 25 years now. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Saturday by appointment only, and remember, don't squint, get tint. So I was reading this morning a story on, uh, it's called The Daily Signal. I've recommended, if you don't already do it, that you sign up, if you've got email, you sign up for The Daily Signal's daily emails. Well, they come six times a day. Five days, it's fresh, and then they do a wrap-up on Saturday where they wrap up the best stories of the week. But The Daily Signal had this today. The Little Sisters of the Poor case isn't just about providing birth control. This was the case argued last week at the Supreme Court. Now, you would expect a, a communist like Judge uh, Ruth Bader Meinhof to take offense at this. Plus, I don't think she likes Christians either. But you had even people, oh, some of them, Sonia Sotomayor, showed a little sympathy, if not a lot, toward the nuns who were involved in this case. Now, this case is also rolled in together with a number of others. You have several Catholic colleges and even Baptist universities that are all in that, that this case is, encompasses all of their arguments at this point. And what they're doing is they're trying to say, look, our religious faith believes that abortion is murder. And in the Catholic faith, we believe, of course, too, that, that contraception is wrong because you're blocking God's will. Now, you may not respect that. I understand that. A lot of people listening may say, well, you know, we don't believe that over at my church. That's fine. But here's the thing. That First Amendment says that you have freedom of religion, and if this is part of your religious faith, then you're allowed to believe that. Number two, let's bring this up. They're being told they have to provide health insurance for people who would work for them, and that health insurance would also provide birth control and a drug, which is called the overnight abortion pill, RU486. I'm not aware, you know, when I go to, when I, I have a very good health insurance plan here at Town Square Media, but I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't cover condoms, not that I buy any, and I wouldn't expect it to, for crying out loud. And so you've got people on the left, as I've said many times before, who think pregnancy is an illness, and they're just trying to we'll kill that child for you, it will make you pay for it. This is what they're trying to that they're trying to set up, but this shows you the lack of respect Mr. Obama has for people of religious faith. And if I could add to that, if they can tell you to be a party in what you believe is homicide or infanticide, then what else can they tell the religious they have to believe in? See, this is where this gets really serious because a decision against the little sisters of the poor, which is entirely possible, these precedents are then set up in law. And then someone else will come along a few years from now and say, well, your church over here believes X, Y, and Z, and the government no longer wants you to believe that. And since we already have a court ruling over here that says we can tell you to participate in murder and infanticide, we're going to tell you that you've got to participate in X, Y, Z as well, or against X, Y, Z. 
This is the critical nature of all this. And then if you take out freedom of religion, which is one of the five liberties guaranteed in that Constitution, you'll take out the, uh, in the First Amendment alone, you'll take out all the other four because then all of a sudden, you know, it's like playing that game Django where you keep pulling the little, the little pieces of wood out or kerplunk. Eventually, everything's going to come cascading down. So something like freedom of assembly, which protects your right, for instance, to go out and join a labor union, that'll be gone. So then you could have someone who comes into office and doesn't believe in labor unions and says, well, I'm sorry, but if we don't have freedom of religion, it's just a you know, piece of paper, then you don't have freedom of assembly. So it goes both ways, folks. It's going to hurt the left as much as it's going to hurt the right. Got to understand that. Right now, there is a war on our liberties being conducted by a government that is nothing but ruthless, vicious, and amoral. Randy Staples is on the way from Idaho Weekly Briefing in just a couple of minutes. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. Idaho has a new concealed carry law. We'll talk about that with Randy in just a short while.